Hello everyone, welcome to Manvi Tips. So what you all are looking at is a drawing of a Buddha that I'm making specially on the day of Visak that is also known as the Buddha Day 5th May to celebrate the teachings of Buddha which is compassion, peace, goodwill and humanity <laughs> that I think we all don't follow these days. But coming to the art, this specially is known as Gandhara art developed in ancient times of Gandhara region now also known as Northwestern Pakistan. So today I am converting a sculpture into a painting. So the first thing to keep in mind is the study of light which falls on the sculpture and the background. That is what is going to be the most important thing. So I started with a grey or I would say a low saturated gradient to show how to bring light and dark impact throughout the painting. So please do ignore the sound of my child which is in the background. When we are accepting the birds chirping, I think we should also accept my child chirping right now. So let's continue with our conversation. So do you want to test how well you can understand gradient and how accurate your color theory is? Then answer this question of mine. So I want you guys to guess which color is there in the background? Is it blue, red, green, yellow, orange or purple? So wait for a few minutes. I'm just going to soon reveal which color I'm making. So let me give you guys a small hint. This painting is a commission painting for a home, which means obviously it is going to have a warm palette. So I will quickly remove all the cool colors and we are left with the warm ones. Now are you getting closer to the hint? If you are still confused with the warm palette then I must say then go and check out my previous video where I am discussing about color theory. Alright so coming back to the painting and this was one of the work that I really liked and admired because it did not just have a Buddha's painting or a Buddha's sculpture in it which a lot of people believe brings positivity in their home but also there are lilies surrounded by it which also represents purity, commitment and rebirth. So you will see a lot of people uh, use this painting as their home decor in their houses, especially a lot of part of Asia. So while you are guessing which color it would be, let me tell you what I'm going to be showing you in this video are few mistakes that I did which did not give the same impact of a sculpture and I'm soon going to discuss those with you so that you can avoid making those mistakes by yourself. Well, I'll cut the cheese and it's time to reveal the color and that was, if you can see very slowly, I'm going to increase the saturation and voila, yes, it was an orange color, a rust one. So now do drop down, go to the comment section and write down which color did you guess and were you right or not? So the palette that I'll be using is a bit rust orange. So when I was making the sculpture, the mistake that I'm talking about is the look was not coming of a gold. However, I followed everything from the palette and I studied the shadow and also the reflection of orange on gold. But Buddha gave a peach effect at some places and while I was painting this I did not use the gold color because it was a matte sculpture so I used an ochre palette to maintain the color and used orange rust wherever I saw reflection on it but still it looked as if something was missing it wasn't coming out as a sculpture so who else to point out my mistakes and put me on the right track? None other than my husband. He said golden words which I would always remember and would like to share it with you all is that he said you are very good with human anatomy and drapery but if you look at this painting do not forget you are painting a sculpture so stop looking at it as a Buddha as a human and start thinking of it as a statue. 
and bingo it worked i always tell my students when you will think while making something your hands will automatically coordinate with your mind and build it as per it i changed these few things it felt right at its place and that's when i completed the look and it was perfect now i just was left with flowers so i quickly finished the white lilies with few reflections of gold and rust to make it feel like the sculpture is surrounded with lilies so now let's talk about the second mistake that often people make is when you are making a face they try to make it very similar and symmetrical face but that is the biggest mistake that you can do my advice is when you are making a face always remember there has to be a difference there has to be a difference between right and left side of the face reason number a is that there is a reflection of the objects around you b there is always light and dark one side is light if the light is throwing from one side there would be shadow on the other which will automatically change the size of the eye or the size of the nose or the curves of the lips so considering that never try to bring because a lot of time artists or a lot of struggling artists they try to bring similar angle and similar proportion on both the side but in reality that is not possible in real human beings too so don't worry about it even if it is a sculpture understand that there will be shadows and there will be highlights which will automatically lead to different size and different angle in the formation of the face so now coming to the upper part and that is the head of the sculpture when i was doing this we know that in reality there were a lot of details but the image the reference image through which i am using this as a painting it also does not have a very clear formation of the head so i am going to quickly uh, give only rough patches on it you can see i am trying to bring the chin and i'm going to also make sure there are few essence of gold still left and there are few reflections of peach and orange on it especially the ear part i can see the shadow on the shadow side there is a deep bronze effect so i'm trying to bring that and i know some of the videos uh, there are patches because i have missed the recording and sometimes I, i in the middle of the work i realize that i wasn't recording this part so ignore that and so now only the two layers of this painting is left i can see i have done the background i have done the framing and the main part is almost done the statue of the buddha is complete and i feel the gold effect is perfect the shadow is falling and i can feel the depth also now i am going to be completing the leaf and the lilies so the i can see there are few shades of greens but not very bright they are all subtle palette of greens so i'm going to quickly bring the leaf there and i'm going to show a zoom in version where i will show how i did the flower details and again i will skip and jump onto the next step where i have not able to record the other two flowers so this particular painting is almost complete and i am about to sign it and suggestion when i'm usually painting where there are lots of elements in it i get confused or where should i be signing my um name it should not be very much in focus and yet subtle in digital art it is a bit tricky because a lot of people tend to crop and cut and use the image and forward it at many places so i try to make it uh, in an obvious place but yet not or very obvious if you guys have any idea of how to sign or where to decide how to make that decision of where to sign the work please leave it in the comment section and share it with all of us so when i was painting this i kept few things in mind that i would like to share it with you guys is a 
when i made the background i made sure to give more importance to the gradient than the texture i made sure the texture is very subtle and almost zero uh, but when i was making the frame that is around the sculpture uh, the statue so i made sure there are few patches which are embossed and looks rough so that it gives an old vintage effect also when i was making the leaf i gave more uh, importance to the tonal variation of the leaf and uh, less of on the texture but when i was making the flower yes i did focus on the texture more and the smoothness and yet there should be the strokes should be with the ma in the manner of how the petal petals are formed so remember when you are making the flower the strokes should be smooth yet they should overlap each other and it should be in the form of the petal so if you can see very carefully the front petal that i just made i did few mistakes and i erased it again and made the petal in that formation hope these points that i have mentioned in this painting helps you guys out not only to those who are digital artists but also to those who would be or would love to try this painting manually best of luck I know this video was a very long one but trust me it took me longer to paint and it took me more more than the days that were targeted that's why the video uploading is a bit slow but bear with me and don't forget to leave the comments So for now I have signed it here and this painting is a commission painting available in a print form for you all you can see the texture is very much like oil painting it will be printed on a canvas to give it a perfect painting effect thank you everyone for watching manvi tips